Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling's book review. So I'm a little bit late to getting around to these Harry Potter books, and uh, I've ended. I had seen most of the movies before I started the book. Uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, I saw in the theaters uh, and really enjoyed it. Actually, in fact. This was the movie that kind of got me hooked on the Harry Potter franchise. I had seen all the other movies before. I hadn't read the books at this point, but I had been seeing all the movies before. But I hadn't been like a huge fan. I was just seeing them, you know, because they were these big movies that came out and everyone kind of saw them. But after seeing The Goblet of Fire, I felt like I was really invested in these characters and kind of hooked on this world. Uh, and so shortly after that, uh, somebody gave me their copy of the audiobooks, and I kind of worked my way through the audiobooks of Harry Potter 1, 2, 3, and then 4. Um, I have to admit, I was such a big fan of the movie that I... Um, I almost kind of preferred the movie. I, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, the books are always better, but I've got this theory that people are kind of fondest towards whatever medium they first encountered the story in. So for example, you know, like uh, those Disney cartoons, Peter Pan or The Jungle Book, I, I know they don't, they don't compare to the works of literature in which they're based on, and yet, if you grow up with the cartoons, you know, the Disney version of Peter Pan is Peter Pan. And then when you read the original J.M. Barry book, you're kind of resistant to it. Because, no, 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 this isn't Peter Pan. The version I grew up with is a Peter Pan. No, I didn't really grow up with this. There was just kind of a space of, I don't know, a year and a half between when I saw the movie and when I actually read the book. Uh, and I was already an adult at the time. But... There were some things in the movies I liked better. I thought Snape was much cooler in the movies than he was in the books. Partly this is because of Alan Rickman. Uh, Alan Rickman is one of the greatest actors ever. Certainly one of the greatest underrated actors. Like, he never got enough credit in his lifetime. He just did such a good job with Snape in the movies. Um, Malfoy just uh, he just comes up as such a flat character in the books like in the books his only purpose is just to antagonize harry potter he's really gonna got no three dimensions no kind of believable motivations in the movies well in the movies it's the same but i think that guy who plays him whose name i forget right now tom felton was it just because it's a real human playing him, and just because, you know, for I, I thought the child actor who did Malfoy was quite good, he comes up a little bit more fleshed out in the movies, just by virtue of being acted by a real person. Now, obviously, the movie can't quite get to the all the stuff in the book just because of the time limits, but I wasn't a big fan of that whole house elf subplot, subplot from the book anyways. I thought maybe it was just as well it got cut from the movie. Um, and uh, I thought the house elves were pretty annoying characters, both in the books and when they did appear in the movies, like in, in the second movie. I thought it was a good decision in the movie to kind of give some of those parts to Neville Longbottom instead, because otherwise Neville Longbottom wouldn't have had a lot to do in that movie. So, yeah, sorry. Um, of course, the movie doesn't get into as much detail as the book. And in this way, I guess the book is probably always superior. For example, in the movie, you only get the smallest of glimpses of the Quidditch World Cup, or the Wizard's Council, or many of the minor characters, like Karkaroff. I, you know, I didn't really even realize who Karkaroff was when I first saw the movie, or fully catch on to his significance of the plot. Uh, same with the whole subplot about Barney Crouch and his son. It's just mentioned so briefly in the movie, you just... 
the significance of it really doesn't sink in when you're watching the movie. So in that respect, you get the whole kind of saga from the book, the whole history of this family, and you understand what's going on a lot better. So yeah, the book is better, really. But I just really like the movie.